بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم انشالله today we're going to be talking about a very important topic I believe this is the most important topic in religion and I would say in life in general it's it's a topic that not only can change our um, our religious life in the sense that it will make everything make sense because right now religion for a lot of us it's different pieces of a puzzle that don't go well together we know we need to do this we know we need to do that read a little bit of this do or read Quran do prayer do this and the thing that puts all of these together and gives it a shape in my view it's God's love it's it's and as I prior to this, I don't even think religion has started. I think religion starts with love, with God's love. It's a very important topic. And unfortunately, despite the significance it has, it is not that much spoken about. We have a lot of ahadith in which the Ahl Bayt say, Religion starts with the knowledge of God. And God himself, when he wants to introduce himself, he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Allah Rahman Rahim. I am the most compassionate, the most loving, the most merciful. So if the beginning of religion is to know God and God Himself introduces Himself as love, then we should know that love is the most important concept in religion. As that if you think about it, the whole every factor in religion. God introduced it as mercy, as love. Oh, God Himself, Rahman and Rahim, right? God Himself, Rahman and Rahim. Who is the messenger that God sent to us? How does God introduce the messenger? He says, Wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin. About the Prophet, the messenger of God, God says, We did not send you other than mercy to al alamin. Rahmatan lil alamin. Alamin means anything other than God. Yani a mercy for everything. A, you know, a source of love for everything. So, God Himself, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim. The messenger He sent to bring a message is Rahmatan lil alamin. And what is that message? That message is Quran. Ke if you look at the Quran, it introduces itself as Fihe. What? Masalam, we have Fihe Shafa, Ya Fihe Hoda, Wa Fihe Rahma. And the Quran itself, when it wants to say, what is inside me? What is this message I have? It says in it, it's guidance, healing for the hearts, shifa on fissudur, vahwat, rahma, and mercy. So, the one who sent religion, the one who gave religion is Rahman, the loving one. The one who brought it to us is rahmatan lil alameen, mercy for all, you know, not just humanity, but everything, lil alameen. And the message that was brought as well is what? Is mercy. Mercy and shifa. So as you can see, we are dealing with a package of love and mercy. But unfortunately, by the time this package reached us throughout these 14 centuries of history, when we had it in our hands, not much, was, not much love was left inside it, unfortunately. And this is because along this journey so many people hold uh, held this message and passed it on that they themselves were not qualified for doing so although we're not judging anyone i am not qualified either right i am not judging anyone but i'm saying we didn't get it directly from the prophet if we had got it directly from the prophet or the ahl bayt alone we would be rejoicing in love and joy we would be so excited with this religion god says in the quran that because of god's grace and mercy and love you should be so happy you should be excited you should be in such joy that you have such a loving and merciful God. You should be so happy. And farah is a kind of happiness which is so much. 
right? Or مثلا in another verse God says أليس الله كاف أبده Am I not enough? Is it not enough for you to know that you are in a world that is created by a God who loves you so much? Is that not enough for you to know that your beloved is always there with you? خب What happened that by the time religion reached us not much of that love was there <laughs> we if you ask anyone who goes for example to a sunday school or to a lecture or to some religious madrasas what is this thing that you're being taught the last thing they would say is that this is fihi rahma shifaun lil sudur or this is rahmatan lil alami no it's a little bit grumpy it's like they said you have to say wala lean or your prayer is not accepted and if you don't pray you know what's awaiting you hellfire and torture so etc so you can see that by the time it reached us there is not much love it's a lot of harshness do this or you will be punished do this or that will happen to you and what does Quran say about harshness? Quran is very beautiful. Quran tells the Prophet, Prophet, it was with our love we gave you so much love and you became so soft. See, Quran is telling us that the one who wants to speak to people about God has to be soft, has to be loving. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. God says, if someone comes to you to speak to you about religion about me and he's not loving and so i don't want it he's not from me you know as god says if i want to send a messenger to go and speak to my people the people that i love so much i've created out of love i want that messenger to be nice and so prophet i've given you so much love so that you're soft so that when you go to my people you're nice with them you're patient with them you don't get angry at them خب, what will happen if you're harsh or god says دیگه, that's not religion people will go away from you as soon as you become a little bit harsh or innocent people will go away yani not only you have to be nice but also i've given people a feature they know if you're harsh they know you're not from me they'll leave you they'll go away and i believe the reason why many people right now don't like religion is that alone religion has turned into it's very harsh it's not soft it's not beautiful and tonight i'll give you believe me i'll give you so many examples to show you how beautiful religion is the same verse مثلا, someone can come and share it with you and make it seem so boring so it's and it's so interesting one of the things inshallah tonight will do i'll read you a verse of the quran show you how people understand it now and then i will show you how imam hussein understood it and you can see between how we understand it now and how imam hussein it's, it's the difference is from here to mars the difference is so much it's 180 degrees different imam hussein explains that verse to say it's full of love but people right now explain to say oh god is very angry i'll show you the pass what am i saying i'm saying oh religion has the power to be misunderstood God said, if you want to make sure religion comes to you in its beautiful, pure form, that a line of love needs to be kept. This is very important. Please pay attention. If there's one thing you want to take away from tonight's list, session, let it be this. God says the only way that religion can come purely to you is that everything between God and you, the whole chain has to be a chain of love and mercy. I explained it. God Himself, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Prophet, Rahmatan lil Alameen, mercy for the whole universe, and Quran itself is also a mercy. If in these chains someone comes in the middle who doesn't have love, who doesn't have mercy, he will ruin the message. He will add his own shortcoming to the message. Right? Yani, not everyone can teach religion. Not everyone can understand Quran. This is why the Prophet said, 
sorry, the Quran said, God said, in order to understand this book, you need a prophet to explain it for you. You need someone beautiful, someone full of love to explain to you, to show you how much love is in this book. Right? You need someone like the prophet who can teach you the book. And the prophet as well, when he was leaving us in this world, at least, I mean, leaving us on surface of course otherwise he hope he's with us he said this book i have given you you need a few people who understand it together with it otherwise you will not get it you will go to it and you think it's harsh you will go to it and you won't become softer you won't become more beautiful i will give you a few people that if you follow they will show you how this book is beautiful how this book is full of love مثلا امام سجاد علیه السلام امام حسین علیه السلام tonight i'll show you all. and by the way don't think that if you call yourself shia alone you're getting your quran from the ahlul bayt not at all not at all Quran, the way most of us are understanding it, has nothing to do with the understanding of ahl bayt and i will show you and your questions show it as well خب امام سجاد علیه السلام فور اگزامپل سیز گایز آی رید قرآن اند ایتس ا حدیث فرام امام سجاد هی سیز مای سامری اف قرآن از دس یعنی اف آی وانت تو برینگ اول اف قرآن اینتو وان کانسپت وات آی انجستود فرام ایت حالا ایمیجن وات داز امام سجاد سی ثینک اباوت ایت فور ا سیکن وات داز امام سجاد سی دات وان word one concept that can summarize all of religion is think about it imam sajjad says forgiveness forgiveness it says forgive خب. how is he reading the quran that he summarizes it as forgiveness but alone there are so many people who read the quran they become angrier they read the quran they think that oh we have to go and force everyone to pray we have to go and make everyone accept religion or خب what is happening and these people are not very far from us so all around us we're seeing people like that they read the Quran they become more judgmental Alan do you know how many questions I'm getting from you that saying Sheikh all we see in Quran is anger of God hellfire خب this means that we're not reading the Quran the way Imam Sajjad read it Imam Sajjad says I read it it was all forgiveness Hala, I want to give you an example because this was one of the questions that uh, one of the beautiful souls sent me let me read his question for you and then I'll show you how Imam Hussein read the, those verses that created a question for our beautiful friend. Khob. The question is this. Salam. Alaikum salam. Q, which probably stands for question. How would you interpret, for example, Quran chapter 76 verse 10, indeed we fear from our Lord a day frowning and faithful in your understanding of islam which emphasizes love of allah without fear Rebin immediately says your understanding of islam which emphasizes love of allah my understanding of islam or is quran saying it وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ is my understanding or is quran introducing the prophet خب بعد this is the fear of the believers. Also, please talk about your understanding of divine punishment of those lacking faith mentioned in verses such as 76, chapter 76, verse 4. Indeed, we have prepared for the faithless chains, iron colors, and a blaze within the understanding of an all-merciful God. Yani by this point, you see that the beautiful soul who sent the question is even doubting that God is all-merciful. Mean, this is not a matter that we can take lightly on. Any Alan, the way we have introduced religion to people is that they even doubt God is all merciful. In your understanding that God is merciful. Okay, this is my understanding. Bismillah rahman rahim is my understanding. God says, Wasa'at rahmati kullashai. My mercy encompasses everything. Is my understanding or is the Quran? The first line of dua comment, it's so interesting. Yesterday I had an event. I asked people, what is the first line of dua comment? Allah, I'll ask you as well. What is the first line of Dua Kumail? Allahumma inni as'aluka bi rahmatika allati wasa'at kulla shay. God, I ask you by your rahma, mercy and love, what kind of love? Allati wasa'at kulla shay, which encompasses everything. 
literally the first line of Dua Kumil that every Thursday we read, we are being told that nothing that exists in this universe can be out of God's love, out of God's mercy. This is me or this is Imam Ali. Oh, let's go to this surah that created questions for my beautiful friend who Muhammad John who sent this question. By the way, I love Muhammad and I'm very happy he sent these questions because we need to bring all of these questions out and inshallah we'll reflect on it and I'll show you how it is so easily understood. It's not a big deal, by the way. Masala, many people think I haven't seen these verses. Masala, I haven't seen Shadidul Iqab. Baba, I've seen it all. I know we'll go through them one by one, inshallah. And you see that your God is so beautiful. You just want to get up and run around the room, which is again not from me. God Himself says, لو علم المدبرون عني كيف اشتياق كيف شوقي واشتياقي لهم لما توشوقا God says if the ones who've turned away from me knew how much I love them اصلا how much I'm yearning for them they couldn't contain that joy God is saying يعني ببین الان you read that hadith and you're just sitting down now. God is saying if you're sitting down very comfortably like that you don't know how much I love you. You don't know me. God says, God says, if you knew me, it has a test. You should be up and moving around in joy. That's the kind of God I am for you. In the Quran, it says, فَلْيَفْرَحُ If you knew who I am, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ فَلْيَفْرَحُ It's such an interesting verse. Beautiful. So, let's go and read this. The verses that our friend had a question from are from Surah Insan. Let's read the Surah together if you agree. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of the most loving, the most merciful. See, where we want to read the Quran, we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. God is telling us, whatever you read after that, you should know it's coming from a loving God. If you read any verse and it doesn't make you feel love, know that you understood it wrong. هل أتى على الإنسان حين من أنده لم يكن شيئا مذكورا Was there not a period for every insan, you and me, that لم يكن شيئا مذكورا That they were not, a, a, they did not have a name, they were not mentioned لم يكن شيئا مذكورا مذكورا means something that's remembered, mentioned, right? Quran says, was there not a time for people, for any insan, that they were not mentioned? Hope this is before our birthday, right? Hello. There is immediately, I will show you two ways of understanding this. The route that a lot of Mufassirin, a lot of Masalan Muslim along will go is this. They'll say, insan, you're so unworthy. Baby, I send you were nothing. Sometimes Lam Yakun Shay and Madhkura, they even translate it as you were nothing. Baby, don't become pride. <laughs> I'm using a little bit of Persian accent. You were nothing. Don't take yourself so seriously. You were nothing, right? Asan, I've created you. There was a time you weren't even a sperm. You were nothing. So I don't get yourself too high. All right. Honestly, I've seen so many lectures explaining this like that. Now, let's go and see how does Imam Hussein alayhi salam understood this. I've always tell people, if you want to understand Quran, tafsir of Quran is the du'as of Ahl al-Bayt. And I'll show you one of the best examples of that. We go to du'a Arafah of Imam Hussein, and he uses the same line. Let me just bring the dua. I want to read it for you and show it to you so you see, inshallah, that the same phrase Imam Hussein explains it. And instead of saying, Enson, you were nothing going on, let's see what does Imam Hussein do. Mavkura. Aha. There we go. Bin Ni'amatika. 
وابتدعتني بنعمتك ولم يكن شيئا مذكورا Just check the difference between Imam Hussein and the the duas the the way that a lot of the scholars. Let me just get. I want to show you as well. Uh huh. Cool. Baby, this is from Dua Arafat. This is so important. I want to show you. What? Oh, you can't really see it. Huh? Let me put it that way. Otherwise, it will be reversed. بسم الله خب سی امام سیز ابتدعتنی ابتدعتنی به نعمت که قبل ان اکون شیعا مذکورا What was the verse of the Quran? هل اتا على الانسان حین من الدهر لم یکن شیعا مذکورا شیعا مذکورا این در قرآن شیعا مذکورا این دو عرفه خب let me show you the Quran part as well so you see ببین هل اتا على الانسان حين من الدهر لم يكن شيئا مذكورا this bit right خب how does امام حسین explain it امام حسین takes this and explains it says God I wasn't even a person in the sense that no one even mentioned me no one knew me و ابتدعتنی به نعمتت you started giving me your blessings and yeah, Imam Hussein is saying, beautiful soul, if you want to understand this verse, what God is trying to tell you is not that you were nothing, don't take yourself to see this. No, God says, baby, before you even had a name, I started loving you. Our relationship together goes so far. I loved you before you were even born. Before, you, before anyone even knew you exist, I loved you. In fact, the reason you exist is out of my love. Literally, these are all phrases from Dua Arafat. Those who've read Dua Arafat or the book, they know all of this. Imam Hussein says, God, you took care of me before I was even born. Masalan, from one ancestor to another ancestor, from the loins to the wombs of my ancestors, you took care of me and you brought me into this world only at a time in which I could shine. Imam Hussein says there were so many times in history that I could be born, but God said, no, 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 if, if he comes here, it wouldn't be good for him or she. I will wait for the right time that, you know, it would be the perfect time. And then Imam says, let me show you this honestly to, to see how we're misreading the Quran. Imam Hussein says, Falam Azal Zain and Min Sulbin Ela Rahimin Fitaka Domin Minal Ayam El Maldia Wal Gurun El Khalia. Check this part. This part. Lam Toch Regni Lera Fatikabi Wal Lutfekali Wa Ehsanika Elaya. Imam says, God, you could have brought me so much earlier, but out of your kindness, out of your grace, out of your goodness for me, you waited for the right time for me. Hold up. Let me show you. And the moment you brought me to this world, that I finally was born, was out of what? Out of ra'fa. Out of your kindness, what Out of God's, again, another word, hanun, another kind of kindness. Alayya, lilladi sabaq ali min al Yani, God, Imam Hussein is saying, Lam tushhidni khalqi, wa lam taj'al ilayya shay'an min amri, thumma akhrajtani lilladi sabaq ali min al huda, ila dunya tamman sawiyya. Maybe on that verse in the Quran that God says, Hal ata min al institute, what was it? Hal, hal ata ala al insani hino min al dahri lam yakun shay an mathkura. Was there a time in which insan you were not mentioned, you didn't have a name? Imam Hussein explains all of that. He says, Yes, God, there was. There was a time like that. And you kept me, you protected me, you didn't bring me to this world when I wasn't ready, when the world did not match my potentials. And out of your kindness, you brought me in the right time. Ra'fatan wa tahannunan. And Imam Hussein says, everything that happened at the moment of our birth was out of God's love. And then it's so interesting. He even says, God, you didn't make me have to struggle at all to exist. No, 
my creation, my birth, none of that. You didn't get me involved in the trouble of making me. No, you said, you know what? When you want to come to this world, I want you to relax. You don't need to do anything. I'll create a body for you. I'll breathe into you from my own spirit, right? You didn't get me. If you want to exist, now come on. Write the papers or apply. You need an application form with two references to be able to be born. You know, if you want to be enrolled in life, God says, no, you didn't get me to do anything. It was all a gift. You sent me to this world. Oh, and then I came to this world. What happened? And I was a little baby. You protected me in the cradle. Imam says, even the milk in the breast of my mother, God, you put it there so that I wouldn't feel bad. And you made people who are nice take care of me. Baby? Do you see how that verse in the Quran, the tafsir of it is in the Dua Arafah of Imam Hussein? Well, Alan, tell me, is it not tasting so different, that verse of the Quran? The problem is, I closed the comment section, so you can't really tell. But, <laughs> but I hope to you, it also, you can see that it, it tastes so different. Someone comes and says, Ansa, there was a time you were nothing. Don't take yourself so seriously. Or Imam Hussein, who reads that verse and says, God is explaining to me, Ansa, you weren't even here. Oh. I created you out of love, God is saying. And you came here, I protected you, I took care of you. And Imam Hussein is saying that in this verse, what God is trying to tell us is this. Baby, I know so many people may love you right now. Your mom loves you, your partner loves you, your sister loves you. I know all of that. Oh, I loved you before all of them. I don't know if you've seen it sometimes or not. Masalan, I've seen it. Masalan, sometimes mothers who are a little bit missing their child, they say, I love it that your wife loves you and alhamdulillah, you're a great relationship. But mom, I loved you before her. Uh, you know, I started loving you when you were a baby. In this verse, God is literally saying that. I loved you before anyone else. Uh, I mean, our relationship goes so far. No one even knew you existed. I started loving you. Asan, you weren't even there. I started loving you. Asan, the fact that you were created was out of love. See how much love is pouring out of every word in this verse. But we have been given religion in such a way that alone someone sends that verse to me. And says, Sheikh, how can this be reconciled with God's love? What went wrong along the way? Oh. But let's continue with the uh, with the surah. Or maybe I'll mention another point, then we'll come back to the surah. Oh, I'm talking so much. It's 10.44. Oh. Maybe I'll try to speak another 15 minutes, then we'll go to the Q&A. Although I have so much to say about this topic. Um, God's love is not a topic that, um, you say, oh, there's this verse, or what about that verse? And it's not one idea in religion. God's love is religion, is the most important thing. And... If you don't understand God's love, as in the whole meta-narrative of religion doesn't make sense to you. Oh, well, in Dua Arafa, I've spoken about it. Dige. The whole story of insan is what? Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are for God and our story is that we are going back to God. Inna ilayhi raji'un. Asan, the reason we're here in this world and the, all the other worlds that we will be in, because the dunya is not the only world we'll be in. There are going to be so many, and he, this 60, 70, 80 years of in this world is the first chapter of our existence. We're going to go through so many journeys. Where are we going to? Where is the destination? Asan, what is the story of insan? Quran explains it, Elaihe Raja'un. The ending point of the story of Insan is a meeting with beloved, is meeting with God, is going back to God. Even in Dua Arafah, Imam Hussein says, I'll be returning to you. 
پس when as an insan I have finally fulfilled my story I have become the hero of my story when have I perfected my religion when have I perfected myself my full potential that's when I return to God hold on just accept this from me for now we can talk about it later on I'll say what I'm talking about this Pass between when you pray, when you fast, when you do whatever you do, it's not just to pray. It's to increase your readiness for that meeting with God. It's to be able to go in this journey and go towards God. If the ending point, if the destination of everything we do in religion, everything we do with morality is to go towards God, how can I then have fear of God. This is very important. You know, I'm not talking to you about one verse or two verse or a hadith here. No, no, no. As I'm t talking about the meta-narrative. If God is the destination and you're scared of God, it means that you want to keep going towards Him, but you're scared. And you're scared of where you have to go, so you keep not going there. You pray, but you keep coming back. And there would always be a fear inside you for getting closer. Any fear of God limits your human journey, creates stagnation. Let me give you another example. So you see what am I studying? This is big picture talking. I'm not speaking about a verse here and there. I mean, I said the story of humanities that we've created here were created out of love to experience so many things and finally go back to God. And Oh, that is so beautiful. It's all we want in life, etc., etc. We'll talk about that in another session. So the destination is to finally go to God who is the source of love and everything. Oh. That is like, imagine there's a race. You're a runner who is running and they say the finishing line is here. And I'm saying the finishing line of our story is a meeting with beloved, the source of love. Oh. Oh, imagine you're a runner. You want to run and reach the finishing line, but you're scared of the finishing line. Oh, you'll keep running towards it, but like, oh, I'm scared of it. Running towards it, scared of it. Running towards it, oh, you know? Imagine, can a runner be scared of the finishing line? Oh, okay, that's where you have to go. If you're scared of it, okay, you can't go there. As in, this is what I'm saying. It doesn't even make sense to be scared of God because that's where you want to go. Oh, let's talk a little bit about as in fear and being scared. Danny, I really wish... Um, other scholars were watching this as well so that in when we want to talk to the community they knew what they're doing all religion is not just reading a hadith here and there or a verse of Quran and going to talk you have to understand what you're doing oh I said I want to open up to you from a foundational level so you see why this could not even be the case oh let's play a game together and for this game I want to open the comment section Tell me some of the things that you are scared of or you know other people are scared of. Oh, I know in my relatives I have someone who's scared of a snake. Let's write down the things we're scared of. Please share it in the comment section. Uh, I know people who are scared of snakes, spiders, cockroaches. Uh, you as well write some things for me. What are some of the things either you're scared of? Dogs? Um, yes, I... Cats even. We, I have a friend and he was so scared of cats. If he went to a restaurant and there was a cat, he would run away. Oh, let's write these down. See, a lot of people are saying spiders, dogs, scorpions, clowns. Oh, that's a, that's a very uh, scary one too. Exams and interviews. There we go. Cats. Oh, very good. Thank you so much for sharing. All animals and insects. Bless. Yeah, I Airborne life, failure, hope, spiders and dogs. Very good. Thank you so much for sharing. Hello, my question from you is this. What do you want to do with this thing that you're scared of? Alan, Masalan, if I tell you there's a spider over there, what would you do? Oh, please, please, honestly, tell me. If Masalan, you are scared of a spider, what what is your natural feeling towards a spider there? Masalan, if you hear that in that room there is a spider, would you go or not? Please, honestly, be honest with me. There is a spider in that room. There is a dog in that room. There is an exam in that room. 
What would you do? Bless you. I'm not saying this. You're saying this. Avoid it. Run away. Escape. Not go there. Run away. This is what you're saying. Allah, this is human. When we are scared of something, we're like, boom, we're going somewhere else. I am not going there. Right? Hope. Hala, I'll go back again to the discussion. Alan, we also, if someone's scared of something, their body's telling them, I don't want to go there. Hope, if you're scared of God, what does that mean? That your heart will never want to go towards God. You may force your body to pray, but you're never fully bringing your heart to your salat. You're never fully bringing your heart to the mosque. You're never fully bringing your heart. Why? Because your heart is scared. And you told me when you're scared of something, you run away from it, you skip it, you avoid it. Ho, pass. Forget about any verse, any hadith. Asan, on a human psychology level, it does not make sense to tell people, be scared of God. God is where you have to go. God is where you should want to go. Imam Sajjad says, Ya mona gulub al The yearning of the heart. Ghayat amal al-arifin. Ahl bayt are telling us, anything you ever loved in this world, you were actually loving God. Anything you desire, that desire was for God. Any God is an object of desire, not your fear. We've got it completely wrong. Fear makes you not go somewhere. And I have proof. Look at the Muslim Ummah. Tell me how many people are enjoying that beautiful relationship with God that Quran says. Well, on says, Enson, do you want to know when you've got it right? When you have understood God? When every day you wake up, you're like, oh, what a beautiful world. A world full of mercy. A world created by Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Literally, the words of Quran. It says, you will only know that you've understood this world and its creator correctly the day that you feel you're embraced by love. You're, you're rejoicing. Is it not enough for you that your beloved is always there with you? And a beloved that's powerful? Okay. Let me talk to you about what was this fear that, that was given to us. So we said the finishing line for us is going towards God. And if we're scared of God, we'll avoid it. Right? I say you want to go and pray, but your heart will not. So you're always like this. But this is why, Masalan, we can pray for 20, 30 years and not feel closer to God. Oh, you go a little bit forward, but your heart brings you back. Masalan, in the nights of God, you want to go towards God, but you keep remembering your sins. You keep saying, Astaghfirullah, 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 Astaghfirullah. And if, if you really think that God is such that you have to apologize to him for one hour and he still does not forgive you, your heart will be like, well, who is this God? I'm scared of him. So you want to go towards God in the nights of God, but the Astaghfirullah brings you back. And as I to tell someone that you have to apologize to God for a thousand times, it means that you're stopping them from going towards God. Because you're telling them that this God that you want to go towards is such an angry God. A thousand times you have to need him to say, I'm sorry, maybe he will forgive. Yani you want to go, but your heart says, oh, I'm scared. What if he hasn't forgiven me? What if he's still mad? What if this? What if that? This is important. To, this is why we're stagnating spiritually. This is why we don't have any of the qualities of mutaqin that Imam Ali mentions in Khutbah Mutaqin. Yani if you look at the descriptions of the Shia given by the Ahl Bayt, we don't have any of them. Believe me, we don't have any of them. مثلا امام علی says God becomes so great in their heart that nothing in this world overwhelms them nothing in this world is even significant for them Alan, how is God big in our eyes how is God's love so important and beautiful that all our problems are small and tiny Alan, what is the fear that we have in religion I mean so we want to go towards God, but sometimes we have shortcomings ourselves that stop us from walking. Masalan, imagine what? I want to go towards God, but then I have a desire 
that is making me heavy. مثلا, I want to go towards God, but there is another desire, مثلا, addiction that takes me this way. خب? Or even takes me back. مثلا, I want to go towards God, but مثلا, let's say there's this desire that keeps distracting me. I want to go that way. خب? It makes my journey farther from God. In these cases, this world is designed so beautifully that when you go towards something that is not good for you, you feel it. Let me give you a few examples so you don't feel like I'm talking abstract things. Masalaka, if you want to go towards God, you have to become more loving and then you feel God more. خب, حالا imagine if you have a desire, مثلا, a temptation or an anger, let's say, and you're angry with your partner, you're angry with, I don't know, your children. خب, this is something that stops you from going towards God. Why? Because God is love. If you want to go towards God, you have to be loving. Anger stops you. خب, Allah God says, baby, look at your own life. The kind of things that stops you in this journey, you don't like it yourself. Allah must have try anger. Be angry with your partner and see what happens. You get angry with your wife, you get angry with your husband, with your children. After a few months, you look around, you're like, oh my God, what happened to our family? My wife is no longer excited to see me. My wife is trying to find excuses to go out with her friends and not talk to me. My children don't like me anymore. When I come back from work, no one's excited to see me. What happened? What did I do to my life? God says, baby, this is the result of your action. You were angry. Look what you created in your house. A family in which when you came back from your work, your husband was excited to see you or your wife was excited to see you. You would sit down, talk to each other, and you were so full of love that it as if like there was no problem in the world. Wasn't that so beautiful? But your anger ruined that. You became angry, you started being picky, grumpy. Now the relationship you had with your husband is not there. With you had with your wife is not there. Do you like this? Say, no, God, I don't like this. My children don't like me. My children don't want to talk to me. My children are scared of me. I don't know, whatever. All of a sudden, I'm talking about one of the things. Anger. God says, baby, anger is like a spider. <laughs> anger is like a spider. Anger is bad. You're like, yeah, anger is bad. I don't want it. So God says, oh, you know what we should do? Let's put anger behind you. And what would you do if you were a spider there? God says, imagine your anger is a spider. What do you do with a spider? He says, I would run away. God says, perfect. Let's treat your anger as a spider. Put it behind you and run away from it. Run towards me. Run towards me. The fear that we have in religion is this. God says, if there are things in your life that you don't like, you don't like yourself or you're jealous, aren't you? Run away from it. Come towards me. Treat your jealousy like a spider. Treat your anger like a spider and run towards me. I love you. Right? Come towards me. Run away from your... Run away from anything inside you that you don't like. That makes your life bad. This is literally what it means. It means, baby, your heart is, is on a path. Oh, your heart is on a path. Allah, it can either go towards things that it doesn't like or it can go towards more. When you say, A'udhu Billah min shaitan rajim you're saying, God, in my heart, I am seeing something that I don't like. Masala, I'm seeing jealousy. I'm seeing a desire. Masala, I'm married, let's say, and I have a desire for someone who's not my partner. I don't like that. God says, Khob, run away from it. Come towards me. Run away from that and run towards me. Right? This is what hope is. Hope is, baby, you don't like a spider. You don't like an anger. Life with anger is not good. Don't want that. Come towards me. Yani, hope in this is you put something that is stopping you from going to God. You put it behind you. So it gives you more energy to run towards God. But at no point you should be scared of God. Because God is the place you run to. In any difficulty in life, in any challenge in life, in any time you see something inside yourself that you don't like, if you don't go to God, where can you go? Let's say you're jealous. Let's say you're angry. Let's say you have an addiction. Let's say you have an anxiety. Let's say you have any sorts of problem. If you don't go towards God, if you're scared of God and you can't run that way, where do you want to run to? And, and I mean, humanity is showing us, uh, I mean, there's a person who's lonely. 
there's a person who's anxious, there's a person who's sad, there's a person who's, who's, whose heart is broken. Oh, they don't know where to escape to. They go on a holiday to escape from a broken heart. You can't, you're taking your heart with you. So many people are in the most beautiful holiday resorts next to the nicest beaches in the world, but they're not enjoying. They're trying to escape from something inside themselves, but they don't have anywhere to go to because wherever they go, they're taking their heart with them. They're taking that dirt, that ugliness or whatever that, that with them. So God says, baby, there's nowhere you can run to. And if you're scared of me, you won't even run to me. But why are you scared of me? What have I ever done to you? Why would I want to, why would I harm you? I said, I loved you before you were even born. So whatever you have inside that you hate it, that you don't like it, run to me. And you don't need to go anywhere. Sit on your couch, sit on your sofa, run away from that desire. Come to me, run away from that anger. Come to me. Imam Ali says what? Elahi wa Rabbi manli ghayruk. Who do I have other than you? Where else can I go when I find something inside myself that I don't like? I have fear. I'm scared. I'm anxious. I, I get jealous. I get angry. I have desires. Where else can I go? Okay, if I don't go towards God, if I want to run away from God, what can I do with myself? Manli ghayruk. Or that Baby, yani this is what I'm trying to show you is that on a foundational level, the concept of fearing God does not make sense. As that it goes against religion. Yani if I, and I'm not saying anyone who spoke about religion this way, they were bad people. Nah, but I'm saying with good intention, they wanted to make people be better people, but they didn't know if you make people scared of God, you have ruined their spirituality. You have blocked them from going to God and a person who is blocked from going to God, all sorts of problems will happen in their hearts. Yani the worst thing you can do to a soul is to create a wall between them and God and the, the worst wall, the worst wall you can put between a soul and its creator is that of fear. Let me read a few lines from Dua Komer for you so you see. Elahi wa Rabbi, man li ghayruk as'aluhu kashf al-dhurri wa nadhara fi amri. Who do I have other than you to kashf al-dhurri, to take my affliction, my pain away from me? Bebin, okay, if God is the one who takes our pain away from us, our affliction away from us, why should I be scared of such a beautiful God? Imam Ali says, be scared of that affliction. Be scared of that anger. Let go of it. Imam Ali is saying, baby, your anger is like a weight that is, carry, that, that is um, making you heavy. You're carrying weights. It's making you heavy. It doesn't allow you to run. It doesn't allow you to fly towards God. Be scared of that. Because what do we do when we're scared of something? We run away from it. So Imam says, if you see something in your heart you don't, run away from it and go towards God. And then when you go towards God, دیگه don't worry. Elahi wa Rabbi man li ghayruk as'aluhu kashf al-dhurri. God is the one who will help you, will remove your affliction from you. God will come to your own heart and will remove what you don't like from your own heart. Believe me, you will become so beautiful this way. You will not believe it because everything in your heart that you don't like, you can run away to God and say, God, remove that. Kashf al -dhurri. And believe me, allow God to come to your heart and see how beautiful that heart can become. Believe me, you wouldn't recognize yourself if you start loving God. You won't believe how beautiful you will be. How... Baby... Allah, I hope, by the way, young children are not watching. Because parents as well, maybe they can. Um, because I want to share some things with you to see how important this is. Oh, I'm watching Islamic Instagram channels about relationship counseling. Oh, one of the advice he was giving was what? To, to women. Women, don't invite your friends to your house or don't keep praising your friends in front of your husband. 
حالا why is that guy mentioning that because there have been so many cases women invited their friends to home and the guy mashallah he couldn't control himself دیگه naughty things happened ها حالا someone could say که, and by the way I'm not judging anyone in this story I'm not judging the husband I'm not judging the wife I'm not judging anyone I'm not even judging the guy who said this but I have a question from you is this insan is this what we can achieve is this the best we can do that a wife cannot even feel safe to invite her friend to her house without her husband Nauzubillah looking at her? Is this the best insan can achieve? Do you know what got stuck us like this? Why we've become like this? That even the religious scholar who wants to give advice is saying women don't invite your friends. Okay, is this the best insan can do? What the hell is this? Yani we're animals? Honestly, are we animals or what are we? Yani, and why is that religious scholar giving that advice? Because he doesn't know anything else. Because he looks and says, yes, it seems like some men, poor things, they don't know what to do. And I'm not judging them all. I'm not judging any of us. Well, when you haven't told someone how to treat themselves, well, what can they do? But I'm saying, oh, the Ahl Bayt they have, Ahl Bayt we have, they came with a different prescription. It said, insan, you don't have to live like an animal. You can become so beautiful. These things are beneath you. How you have a God who loves you so much, you can go towards him. That God will give you so much love. You don't need to go begging in this world for love. Do you know how many partners after 10, 20 years of marriage, they're begging for attention begging because they're not giving it to each other anymore they don't even see each other anymore oh and on and we've created a society everyone is thirsty for love hope obviously either they'll end up acting upon it cheating on each other or they're together but as it's not as if they're living together they're grumpy every day picking on each other every day fighting the passion is gone the love is gone Ahl Bayt said insan this is not what we had in mind for you this is not the kind of life Khalifa of God has to live this is beneath insan Aga, you are the prince of this creation God breathed into you from his own spirit you shouldn't be going around begging for love go to God God will give you so much love God will show you so much beauty yani, baby, this is why I'm saying the idea of God's love is so important as I'm, the way our societies our communities are structured needs to change the communities we have right now are based on fear fear of everything fear of god fear of ourselves, fear of each other and now we go allah i don't want to say bad baby i want to say something i really hope you pay attention to this we are so far from the ahl al-bayt instead of rising ourselves we're bringing them down but they they've made this hadith and many people even share it but i want you to think about it yourself what Imam Ali said, sometimes I don't reply to when a woman tells me salam. I don't reply because I'm worried, masalan, something may happen in my heart. This is your Imam Ali? Wallah, this is your Imam Ali? That his heart would be shaking if a woman says salam and he says alaykum as salam. Alan, I want to ask the, the, the women who are watching, do you really think, Alan, if you go to Najaf and you say salam to Imam Ali, Imam Ali, oh, what if I say salam and I feel something? Is this the Imam we believe in? Well, well, believe me, this has nothing to do with Imam Ali. We've brought them down because we didn't know how to go high. Baba, Imam Ali, it says dunya khurri ghairi. Dunya, not a woman, the whole dunya, ghurri ghairi, go deceive someone else. I am way above you. At has amwannaka jirmun sagheer wa fikan tawal alam al akbaru. Even if this poem is not from Imam Ali, we have a million hadiths in which Imam Ali says, Baba, I am living with you, but I am right now with God. I am next to you, but I'm talking to God. I'm seeing God. There's nothing I see unless I see God before it and after it. You think this Imam Ali cannot control his heart with the voice of a woman? 
خب why does this happen to us that we even make such hadiths of about Imam Ali because we don't know how to handle ourselves. The person sees that خب I am like that پس Imam Ali must be like that نه عزیزم Imam Ali wasn't like that you don't have to be like that either. The moment God's love in, comes into your heart, you will not recognize yourself. And it doesn't have to take that long. In a matter of few weeks, in a matter of few months, you become a different person. All these shortcomings you have, it's, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just a lack of love. The fact that you go out, the smallest thing happens outside, your heart starts trembling, is because this heart hasn't received God's love. And ببین یعنی Even the ones among us who wants to live good life They don't know how I was speaking to a beautiful brother of mine a lo- Not brother as in like a brother in faith Lovely, lovely person I love him so much But I'm like your understanding of religion is hurting you And hurting your family He was telling me Sheikh خب الان in this culture there are so many مثلاً, advertisements, there's even photos. Even when you open your elders' advertisement, perfume, whatever, there are so many women there, they don't have like that much clothing. And I was like, yes, that's true. And he said, these are not good, it affects us. And he said the other day, I was going home, I'm not judging, God. Wallah, I'm not judging. He said, I'm going home, I saw there's these adverts all around us. That is the only way I can go home safe is to just look at my steering wheel and drive like that. And so I was talking to my wife about this. That yes, there is so much. All I'm thinking at that point is do it bigger than first of all, why are you talking to your wife about that? Don't tell your wife that when you're driving something is doing that to your heart. She shouldn't know that. Because what you're telling her is that and you keep this inside yourself between you and God or get help sometimes. Oh, first of all, you don't tell your partner that when I see something, my heart is shaking. That's not good for them to hear. First thing. Second thing, is that the best prescription Islam have for us to focus on the steering wheel? You are here to see God. When you see the creator, all of these, whatever you see in front of you is not even one inch of the beauty of God. That's the kind of life Ahl Bayt wanted for us from us. This is why I keep emphasizing on love. God's love is not a joke. It's the solution to all your problems. It's the solution to all of our challenges. I'm giving you one example. I can go through every problem you're having in life and show you the reason is that you're not having enough love in your heart. Maybe you and, and this is not for Imam Ali. This is for you. I gave this prescription to someone in three weeks their life changed. Someone who for two years was going through a difficulty. It might it was about to end up in a divorce in three weeks. In three weeks, I told him, Don't hate yourself. Any of these things that happen, know that it's natural. The reason is that you haven't received love. Go to God, talk to God, say, God, give me love. Don't be scared of God. Keep going towards God. If it doesn't change, I will change my religion. Believe me, in three weeks it changed. Oh, why is... Yani, I'm not saying this is just for the Ahl Bayt or we should be here living in darkness or temptations or desires. No, this is for us. See how fear becomes the anti-prescription. Fear of God as opposed to fear of those desires leads to the... defeats the purpose. I don't, I'll, I'll show you in a real case that if a marriage that was about to be failing and leading to divorce, two years of fights, solved in three weeks. I'll show you how. When I first met this person, he said, I, I'm very disgusted by myself. I have these desires. I wish I didn't. I'm finding these things inside myself. I have a wife. I have children. I don't want this. Believe me, the day I see him, he, he was a mess. And obviously, who wants to be like that? Have you ever thought it a person who cheats? Do they like to be a cheater? Who would want to be a cheater if they're in their good senses? He hated himself, although he hadn't acted upon it at all. Oh, he said, Chabot, I am so ashamed of myself, I can't even go to God. I said, that's where you're making a mistake. This is why it's taking you two years and it hasn't been fixed. 
That's like someone who has a headache saying, I have such a headache that I'm even ashamed of paracetamol. When you tell people fear God, it's like telling people fear paracetamol. I don't know, fear the remedy, fear the doctor, fear the GP. Oh, I'm even ashamed of the paracetamol. I'm ashamed of going to see the GP. Well, that's why the paracetamol is there. The GP is there. The doctor is there. All you need is there. But you're like, oh my God, I'm ashamed of myself. I told him, don't be ashamed of yourself. Oh, God, you're in son. In son, when it doesn't receive love, becomes like this. Who says that Prophet Yusuf in the Quran? إن النفس لأمارة بسوء إلا ما رحم ربي. The Quran through the Prophet Yusuf is teaching us. In son, know one thing about yourself. You have a nafs. What is nafs? Nafs is when the ruh finds itself in this body, in this world. It says when your ruh, with its infinite beauty and infiniteness, finds itself in this body, forgets how beautiful and infinite it has. It has a quality. What is that quality? لأمارة بسوء. It will start doing all sorts of bad things. It'll get scared, it'll get jealous, it'll have desires, it'll want things it should not have, it will desire things it should not. Unless God's love comes inside it, God's mercy comes inside it. This is the prescription of Quran in the story of Prophet Yusuf. And for every single insan, insan, you are like this. If you don't receive love from God, you will become all sorts of all sorts of weird things. Fear, anxiety, loneliness, anger, addiction, anything. All you need is love. So I told him, what are you ashamed of God for? God himself says you're like this. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This just means that you need to get go and get love from God. Go on. And when you're going to God, don't apologize. I told him. Diga, your state, your whole state is apology. You don't need to say it. Because if you apologize too much, you're stopping the love. Baba, God is so kind that if you apologize too much, Asan, it's rude. It's disrespectful. God says, Hope, I forgave you. Why do you keep apologizing? You're doubting my love. You're doubting my generosity. In front of a loving person, a forgiving person, if you apologize too much, it's rude. Stop apologizing. I told him, go to God and know that there is nothing wrong with you. You just need more love. Go to God, say, God, I don't like these things inside me. Escape away from them, run towards God. But don't be ashamed of God. Get love from God. Let God fill your heart. There is nothing wrong with you. This is not a... Big deal. This is not the end of the world. You don't, you, this is not who you are. This just means that you need more love. Believe me, in three weeks, he said, challenges I was going through for two years finished. So, when I tell you don't make people scared of God, everyone needs God's love, I'm not joking. This is the solution to all of our problems. Allah, what are these verses? What are those hadiths? We will go through all of them one by one. I'll explain it to you. There's no, I have no problem. Till morning, we'll sit down. I'll explain to you every single one of those verses, hadiths. But I'm saying before we go to the hadith, before we go to the verse, understand the big picture why you need to run towards God. Why you need God's love. Because everything depends on it. The person you will be depends on it. The kind of religion you have will depend on it. The kind of interactions you have with your wife, with other people will depend on it. Do you want a kind of life in which you're always scared that maybe I may get tempted, I'll do something crazy, that you can't even trust your partner, that you can't trust others, that you get jealous, that you're always scared, that you don't have anyone to go to, that you feel ashamed of God? Or do you want a kind of life in which you, not anyone else, not the Ahl Bayt, you, you become so beautiful no matter what in the world tries to come in front of you and seduce you. You're like, don't let the car down. <laughs> You're created by my God. Whatever beauty you have is from him. I'm getting God's beauty directly. You think you can seduce me. Ghorri <laughs> of Imam Ali is something every single one of us can say. 
a deadline, a challenge tries to come and seduce you or scare you and woo, like, I'm not scared. I am not going to be anxious. I am connected to the source. A desire tries to come and says, oh, come towards me. Like, Baba, whatever beauty you have, it's from God. I am connected to the source. Why would I be wanting to come towards you? Believe me, this is the kind of life you can have. But in order to go, in order to get that, God has to be a part of every moment of your life. Every moment of your life. That's what taqwa is. Taqwa is in every moment of your life. Keep God with you. Protect God in your heart. Don't let God off your heart, off your mind. And when can you do that? What is one quality that gives the best taqwa? Imagine Masa'al on. Who is the person that you think of the most? Because when you think of someone the most, when you keep remembering them, that means you have taqwa of them. You protect them. You keep remembering them. Hope. Who is that person? These are the person you love. When a happy thing happens for you, who do you want to share it with first? That is someone that you love. It's either a friend or a parent or a partner. You only remember people, have taqwa of people that you love naturally you remember them and that's how should your relationship with God be like yani, you need God in every moment of your life to be beautiful and the best way to keep God in every moment of your life the only way is to love God because insan is like that we only remember things we love we only go towards things that we love we only share our moments with those we love and God says believe me I'm lovable believe me I'm lovable man Allah ahabba those who know me will love me. Believe me, I'm lovable. If they spoke to you in such a way that you didn't like me, that wasn't me. Subhanallah amma yasifun. Anyone who spoke to you in such a way that made God not look beautiful, not look appealing, not look loving, I don't care who they are. And I'm not judging them. They were wrong. They were wrong. So, God's love. <laughs> Although I had so much more to say. By the way, this is also the last bit of our discussion. An answer that you can give anyone who said, because a lot of people say, Sheikh, if God is loving the guy, why should we be good? Well, well, Hassan, I'm saying you need God's love to be good. You know what I mean? Well, Sheikh, if you tell people God loves them, they'll go do anything. I'm like, do it, them. People are doing whatever they're doing because they haven't felt love. Show me one person who is in love and is being jealous. Show me one person who feels God's love and then gets angry. Show me one person who feels God's love and then goes and cheat. What are you on about? I said, this doesn't make sense. Your Sheikh, if you talk about God's love, people will go and become naughty. First of all, people are already naughty. And I'm not judging anyone, uh, but we're all so naughty. Believe me, all these 14 centuries of making people scared of God, let me tell you, it didn't achieve anything. Oh, the surface, we have a community that everyone prays Zoina. At the bottom, we all know what's happening. And if you don't know, open your eyes. Right? Everyone is already naughty. Everyone is already doing things that they are ashamed of. And I'm not judging anyone. Obviously, you haven't given them love. It's like forcing a phone to work without charging it. Hope obviously it'll break. Well, well, put the phone in charge. See how beautiful it becomes. You've created a community deprived of love. And obviously they'll do all sorts of things. The one who's teaching or on the news comes out that God forbid that's what he's been doing. And he, God, I don't want to open that. But the, 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 the prescription of getting people scared of God has not worked. Has not worked. Yani you don't need to be a psychologist or a sociologist to know. You just need to be, you just need to open your eyes. And the kind of challenges people have, the kind of issues people have, it shows that this whole idea that if you tell people God is loving, they'll become naughty, it's shaitan's idea. Although even if the person who says it, it's beautiful, it's not a beautiful idea. It's the worst idea. Imam Ali says, وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لِي حَوْلٌ فَأَنْتَقِلَ بِهِ عَنْ مَعْسِيَتِكَ إِلَّا فِي وَيْقَدْ فِي وَقْتَنَ يَغَثَّنِ مَحَبَّتِكَ Imam Ali says, I have no strength to distance myself from my disobedience, from my sins, unless I feel love. And Imam Ali, Imam Ali, Amir al-Mu'mineen, the leader of the believers. Amir al-Mu'mineen is saying people only stop sinning when they feel love. 
Now you're telling me that if people feel God's love, they'll become naughty. Why should I trust you? I'm going to trust Imam Ali. Because you yourself are full of... And I'm not judging you all. I'm not judging you. Dorit begardam. But you can't handle yourself. Elahi qurbunet beram. Yani, if we're honest with ourselves, none of us is in a position to give prescription. None of us is living a life that is beautiful, that I would be aspired to have. Honestly, none of us is living a life that I would say a Shia of Amir al Mu'minin has. Nah, Baba. We're all overwhelmed with problems, overwhelmed with challenges, anxieties. We don't smile. We're not loving. We're not forgiving. We're not beautiful. You know? We're not enjoying life. We're really not enjoying life. And again, I'm not judging ourselves, but I'm saying if this is the life we find ourselves in, if we haven't even felt God's presence at least one of our prayers in a month, okay, who are we to say this prescription that we followed helps others? Let's for once go back to the Ahl al-Bayt. And Ahl al-Bayt say the only way for people to become beautiful is to feel loved. And my experience has also been showing this to you. And I don't want to share examples because it's first of all people's stories I do not want to mention. And also hope I don't want to be very open. But believe me, challenges you can't believe. Challenges which were enough to end relationships, families. All of it has been fixed with God's love. All of it. The amount of beautiful stories I have of people following God's love and getting themselves out of darknesses that they could not even imagine would ever end i have so many stories like that <laughs> i said i'll speak for 10 to 20 minutes oh maybe i should have said an hour and 10 or 20 minutes <laughs> so maybe we can go to the question if we are supposed to focus on god's love why are there so many verses in the quran about punishments I think I kind of explained that in my uh, presentation, but I'll explain it again in case you couldn't make the link in your mind. Let, let's make that link. Do you remember how I said, Allah, any problem you have, right? The reason it has happened is out of uh, lack, right? Any problem you have, Allah, Anger, jealousy, shouting, hurting, breaking promises, dishonesty, whatever issue you have, what on says it's out of lack of love. You haven't received love. Hello, what are these, all of these um, verses in the Quran that says about punishment? Eh, if God is loving, what is this punishment? Baba, this punishment is very simple to understand. And then look at your own life. In this punishment is happening every moment in your life. Every time you're angry at your friend and you see your friend becomes cold, that is a punishment. It doesn't mean that God will come and do anything. Nah. It means, baby, anger is ugly. Anger makes the world ugly. When you're angry at your friend, your friend is, is upset. It's not like God comes and makes your friend upset. No, you did it. You with your anger. Or if someone hurt you, Masala, I... I'm receiving so many messages from people saying, Sheikh, مثلاً, my father hit me. That moment that your father made a mistake and he hit you with the same act of hitting, he created hell. Allah, in this world, sometimes when people create hell, we also see it. We have to be, and although God will make up for it, Allah will, will speak about that. God will use that in our own favor later on. But I'm saying, Alan, your father, Masalan, who hit you, he ruined the family. And Alan, you don't like him. Imagine now from the moment the father insults his children, he has to live with children who don't love him. As opposed to living with children who are excited to see him, who can become, you know, uh, as opposed to children who can be the source of his pride, his joy. You know, when he becomes older, they'll be there, support him, love him, all of that. The moment you insult your children, you broke all of that. You ruin all of that. Oh, Quran says, insult, be careful. Now, sometimes you can do these things. Quran doesn't say if you shout at your masala and children, I'll come and hurt your children. No, it says that itself is the punishment. Your children will stop loving you. If you root your husband, if you root your wife, 
if you're rude to your friend, in that very moment, you're creating hell next to you. Yani, when we read these verses in the Quran, don't think it's just talking about later on. Baba, we're seeing that every day. Quran is saying, Azizam, if you don't have love inside, you will do nasty things. And those nasty things will create hell around you. Believe me, believe me. I am talking to so many people, 20 year old, 18 year old, 19 year old, who are saying, Sheikh, our house is hell. My dad's hurting my mom. My, my mom can't leave all of this. I don't want to live. I don't want this. خب, what does that mean? Ke, John, as a father, with your actions, you have done something that your child doesn't want to live. Is that hell or not? That's hell. So all these verses you have in the Quran is telling insan, be careful, oh, look what you're doing around yourself. What are you doing? Hala, why am I saying that? Am I saying that because I don't love you? No, Allah, I love you. God says, the reason I'm telling you is that I love you. Khub, alone, you're a dad who's hurting his children. Baba, stop. You don't have to be like that. God says, come to me. Let me give you love. Let me sort you out. Let me heal you. You're hurting your children probably when you were a child. You were hurt as well. There's something missing in you. You haven't learned to love. This is the way you deal with the problems. Come to me, let me heal you. When I heal you, you go and go to your family, see how beautiful your family becomes. How excited your children will be then to see you. See? Hope. In the same way that in this life we all have seen, when we're not on our best form, we do all sorts of things and we ruin everything around us. Our friendships, our marriages, our children, or jobs, everything. So God says, in son, you have two state. Either your heart is full of love, in that case you're beautiful. Your relationships are beautiful. Everything you touch becomes beautiful. When you have love inside, when you're connected to God inside, whatever you touch is good. You come out in the street, you smile at everyone. You share beauty around the, in the world, right? We do. God is telling us, in son, that's what you can be like, huh? Let me come give you love. Whatever you touch becomes beautiful. You go to a relationship, that relationship becomes beautiful. You do parenting, those children become the most lucky children in the world. You're at work, that work becomes beautiful. You talk, your talk is the best. But if inside you don't have love, then you become grumpier. You immediately lose your temper. You quickly shout you quickly burst you you break your promises you have temptations you get scared and all of that ruins the life around you those qualities that grow in your heart when you don't feel love will become a prison that you're stuck in it's not that angels will come and create hell for you nah your own lack of love creates hell for you a lot masala imagine uh, and I've seen this all. I said, imagine, I've seen people who are so successful. They have good wife, good children, good job. Yani everything looks good in their life. But they have a friend who, I has a better paying job. Yani not that their job is bad. Though. It's just that their friend's job is paying more. I know people who, as soon as they see that, they can't enjoy their own life. I said the guy is sitting in a BMW that maybe 90% of people in the world would dream of sitting in. But he's got a friend who Masalan has a Bentley. He doesn't enjoy the BMW. He's so jealous. Jealous. Oh, look, God says, baby, along this jealousy that you have, you're sitting inside a BMW, you're not enjoying it. You go home next to your children who love you. All you're thinking is my friend has a better job than me. My friend has more, is more success than me. You know? And these are not like fantasies. Oh. This is real happening in people's life. Masalan, a speaker may think, oh, that speaker has more followers than me. They don't enjoy. Oh, that session. I've even had... Yani, this jealousy is not for... A group, it's for everyone. I've even, for example, gone to centers. This is Sheikh, we're not happy, for example, not enough people are coming to our center. More people are going to that center. 
خب آخه دورت بگردم God is saying if you have jealousy inside you could be running a session for Imam Hussein instead of enjoying Imam Hussein all your thinking is that oh in the other session in that part of town there are more people their photos will look better خب isn't that hell you're sitting in a session remembering Imam Hussein the most beautiful thing in the world all your thinking is that there are not enough people here so you don't enjoy it you're jealous خب so God says ببین انسان if you have مثلا jealousy inside you can be in the most beautiful place you won't enjoy it الان imagine we'll take you to the best hotel in the world to the best holiday resorts in the world you get there if you're jealous you're like eh مثلا الان I'm in the let's say I don't know prince suite oh there's a executive suite as well who's there oh damn it I wish I had their life Yani even if as a jealous person, even if we take you to the best holiday resort in the world, you look at someone better than you'll ruin it for you. Oh, pass Quran is saying, baby, jealousy is a hell, is a prison. And because it's inside you, wherever you go, you'll take it with you. Even Alan, if we take a jealous person to heaven, he'll go to heaven, Masalan, there's everything there. You'll be like, eh, that person is a higher level of heaven. I don't want it. Believe me, a jealous person will have a harder time in heaven than hell. Because in heaven, he'll see all the people who are happy as and he will die. خب, حالا, what is God saying? Is God trying to say this to hurt us? God says, nah. Baba, you don't have to be like that. Come to me. Let me give you with love. Let me fill your heart with love. Your jealousy will go away. Your anger will go away. Everything you want i'll give it inside your heart directly then your jealousy will go the moment your jealousy go this hell you've created around you will go as well as then you can get to a place where you see other people have something you enjoy it and inshallah in a series i'll talk about how can we get to a place where we enjoy what other people have to the extent that as and we it's like the best thing for us in the life oh how do we maintain our attention on what's important when the payoff is discouraging? I'm not sure I understood the question. If it's okay, maybe you could um, explain it a little bit more to me. And how can I link it to the topic we had as well? Oh, so that was one question. What am I telling you? The verses in the Quran that speaks about punishment. Oh, that's the story behind it. It's not that God is not saying, I will do something to you. You have to understand the language of the Quran together. I, I think I've spoken about this, how to read the Quran. But the gist of it is this. God is telling you, in son, there's two ways of life. Either you come to me, I'll fill you with love. Or if you don't get love, you do all sorts of nasty things. When you do nasty things, you will ruin the world around you. And as you ruin the world around you, inside your heart's qualities will grow and you will be imprisoned in those qualities. Hello, in this world, you may distract yourself from yourself. Masala, when we go on our phone, when we watch something, when we keep being among people, we are distracting ourselves from ourselves. But when we go to the next world, together there aren't that much distraction. It's you and you. Hello, if you've created these bad qualities, if masala, all is inside you is fear, is jealousy, is I don't know, hatred, resentment, that's the world you're in. Yani, when we go to the next world, we're going to be in the room of our heart. It's as if you're living in your heart. Whatever you've created in your heart, you'll be with it. If you've put love there, you'll be in a loving place. If you've put jealousy there, you're jealous. Huh? So God is saying, put good things there. Don't put jealousy there. Don't put anger there. Because now you're distracting yourself from the qualities of your heart. Now you can distract yourself with phone, this, that. When you go to the next world, the distractions go away. It's you and your heart. Put beautiful things there. Right? Salam, Sheikh. I have a more practical question. How do I feel God's love consistently in all states? For example, when I go to school out, I seem to forget his love and get attached to worldly things that hurt me. For example, wanting an attention and popularity from others. And on the day in this presentation bit, I told you the reason we want attention from others and popularity from others it's not at all that there's anything wrong with us. It just means that we need more love. Oh? Hello, how can you feel God's love more? I would say initially it's so nice to have a daily dose of something that reminds you how much God loves you. 
and there aren't unfortunately so much of this available but if you find a nice book مثلاً, I don't know, Secrets of Divine Love a beautiful book to remind us of how much God loves us or مثلاً, the commentary on Dua Arafis something that reminds you every day get a few doses of that let for a while, for a month to let your soul every day get this reminder of how much God loves it in a way that your heart is convinced then slowly, slowly we can build on top of that, right? Then slowly, slowly start talking to God. And you can use so many things as an opportunity to talk to, talk to God. Inside you feel, oh, I'm, need, I'm needing attention from others. Don't be ashamed of that. Be like, oh God, it seems like I need more love. It seems like God, I need a, another dose of love. Yani at that point when you felt God's love in a real way you've practiced that a month or two the Ahlavid say whatever happens in your heart use that as an opportunity to ask God for love you find jealousy said oh God I'm becoming jealous it means I need more love I'm needing other people's attention I need more love and believe me you will see how God will come into your heart and will solve everything and the more you do that the more you see oh my god مثلاً, I asked God for love it wasn't even two hours he gave it to me it will happen you will see miracles every day of your life then the gay slowly slowly it will keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and there are a few phrases there's a few duas that Ahl Bay teach us you can keep asking if it's real in your heart مثلا این مناجات خمسه اشراف امام سجاد امام talks 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 about how beautiful God is God does this for us God does that first he keeps making us want it because I know most of us we haven't felt God's love امام سجاد keeps saying oh I have this relationship with God I have that God does this God does that then he gets your juices going then he says خب you wanted to say اللهم اني اسألك حبك God I want this love too in your qunut, you can say, Allahumma anya saluka hubbak. Before sleeping, you want to sleep, God, I want your love. Allahumma anya saluka hubbak. God, I ask you for your love. Or, Masal Imam Hussein in Dua Araf, Allahumma atlubni bi rahmatik. God, take me towards yourself, want me with love. Right? And the Ahlavit have taught us these are things we can ask God. God, I want love. God, I want to feel love. God, I want to remember you. Or, for in Dua Kumail, Allahumma ani as'aluka bi judika an tudniani min qurbik wa an tuzani shukrak That's, ha, wa an tulhemani dhikrak This is the part I wanted God, tulhemani dhikrak yani, wa an tulhemani dhikrak God, keep making me remember you Reveal your remembrance to my heart Which means what? God For today I'm walking or I'm in a difficult situation or I'm at work Suddenly come to my heart and make me think of you that's literally what the line of Dua Kumail means. Allahumma inni as'aluka bejudika and tulhemani vikrak. God, keep sending your remembrance to my heart. Masalam, I'm at my work. Suddenly, I remember, oh, God's there with me. God loves me. Or I'm in a difficult situation. Suddenly, I remember, oh, God's with me. I can get for help. Masalam, God, qabba ala khidmatika jabarhi. God, I'm going through this. I need energy. Give me energy. Wajdud ala al-azimati jabarhi. Give me energy, right? So they give, you can keep talking to God and at some point you realize that God is the hero of your story. As an, at some point you even realize you don't need to remember God. God is doing everything. You just say, God, you make me remember you. You make me love you. you know, God will take care of you. God will do everything for you, right? And God is so present. God is so there in your life. Diga, you don't even need to stress. You don't even need to worry to remember him. You even put that on him. God, you help me remember you. Masalan, when it, the Prophet says, God, don't leave me to myself even for a second. It's such a beautiful thing to do. You put the responsibility all on God, right? But maybe this can only happen in a relationship of love. Once you feel God's love, once you feel God's presence, again you can trust Him. You can take a leap of faith to God. As and you help me remember you, you make me love you, and God will come and do all of that. The question says, if God's love comes to us through our loved ones, then what about those times in which our loved ones come and abuse us? 
the answer is this that <clears throat> اصلا دعا عرف start with this الحمدلله الذي ليس لقضائه دافع ولا لعطائه مانع دعا امام حسین says ببین God when he wants to give no one can stop it خب God is sending so much love to you حالا either the people who are around you become channels and that love reaches you through them or if they block a channel because people don't have anything they can either open themselves and God love comes through them and reaches us or they block themselves, they close themselves, the love comes and doesn't reach us. But that doesn't mean that this love came here and now our share of love is stuck behind our abusive father. No, Imam Hussein says, If someone blocks the love here, that love will go from a different angle and come and reach us. Oh. God says, the share of love I want to give you will definitely reach you. Hello, either the people around you will open and I'll give it to you through them, or I'll give you from a stranger, through another person, or directly into your own heart. I will get that love to you. Don't worry about it. Right? Hello, how you feel it, when it will come, or you know, again, every story is different. For someone maybe from the very early on get it from their parents, or someone مثلا, like the Prophet Yusuf He even had loving parents But his brothers were jealous They threw him into the well خب, God says now that for example Prophet Yusuf was thrown into the well دیگه, I'm not going to show love to him He says no No one can stop me from loving you Even if your whole family come and try to kill you Like the brothers of Prophet Yusuf Try to get rid of him God says I'll find another way to show you love Right? He says, I'll send the caravan there. They'll take Prophet Yusuf to Egypt. And I will get Zuleikha and the Aziz of Mes to show you love. See? Your brothers didn't want to show you love. I'll find someone else to come show you love. Hello. Zuleikha himself as well. Herself. Sorry. Says, Nadiga, you have to go to prison. God says, it's okay. I'll find another way. Yani, God says, don't you worry. I'm going to send you love and I will find the right way. If people around you block that love, I will send it directly to your heart. Which is the best way as well. As soon as we become an adult, as and when religion starts, that's what is. When God says, come and pray, that's literally what God is saying. your adult. Come, let me give the love directly to you. That God says, God says, pray, so you come to me. Come, let me give it to you. And believe me, if your understanding of God is correct, that if you really figure out who God is, when you go to your prayer mat, you will be filled with love. If you know who you're going to, if you know how much he loves you, if you know why he told you to come to the prayer mat, he said, come so I fill you with love. Your dad didn't give you Ahsan, forget about him. I'll give you so much love that pours out of you love. That's literally how the Prophet was nice to get. I don't think of our Prophet himself. It's not that his family didn't want to give him love, but his father passed away before the Prophet was born. Then his mother passed away. Then his grandfather passed away. Uncle passed away. <laughs> Does that mean that the Prophet is not going to get love from God? No. All of his parents, all of them died. But God says, Wake up in the middle of the night. Baby, these are all verses of the Quran. God speaking to the Prophet. God tells the Prophet, come in the middle of the night when there's no one. Come, let me fill you with love. Let me give you so much love because why? In the day you have to go among people. All of these people you're going to, some of them are angry, some of them are grumpy. They're going to hurt you. Alan, I'm going to give you so much love that no matter what happens during the day, you don't feel that you're losing your balance. Right? So if you're an adult and you're like, oh, God's love didn't reach me through my parents, be like, do it, be them. Go and get it directly. Go to your prayer mat and get it directly. Asan, forget about the prayer mat. Read to Arafah and see how much love comes to you. Believe me. Yani, you realize, Asan, God is right there. There is nothing between you and God. There is so much love you can get directly from God. You will have so much. It will just pour out of you. That's what religion is. Any other explanation of religion is wrong. Hal din illa al 
you pray, you read Quran, whatever you do is to get love from God so that you become beautiful. Any other explanation doesn't make sense. How do we explain God's mercy when we look at suffering and people born into poverty, into oppression? <clears throat> I mean, God says this life, in order to understand it, you can't just look at one chapter, one moment in the story. Well, God says, I mean, what I'm doing is I'm writing a beautiful story for every single one of you, right? Let me repeat the question. How can we explain God's mercy when we look at suffering and people born into difficulties, oppression, poverty, etc.? God says every single insan that is born, every single insan is a masterpiece that I'm creating a beautiful story for. Oh, are some of these stories you've read in the Quran? You've read the story of Yusuf, you've read stories of Mer'on, you've read stories of magicians of Fir'on. You've read some of these stories in the Quran, but that's not all the stories I write, God says. Now, every single one of you, God says, is a beautiful story. Their life, your life is a beautiful story, and you are the hero of that story. Oh, hello. God says, if you want to understand it, you need to know two things. First of all, don't just look at what you're seeing right now and think that this is all there is. If you just look at the first chapter of a story, it may not make sense. You have to see it in a context, right? This is so important. If you just look at something that's happening right now, don't know what's the reasoning behind it, it will not make sense to you, obviously. Oh, look, oh, this is not nice. Masalan, God, how does God teach us this in the story of Prophet Musa and Khizr? Prophet Musa and Prophet Khizr, I've given this example many times, again. some of you may have memorized it. Prophet Musa and Khizr are on a boat that belongs to someone. Prophet Khizr starts creating a hole in the boat. He starts damaging the boat. Prophet Musa gets angry. Ah, what are you doing? You're damaging people's boat. How is this loving? <laughs> how can I reconcile that you love people you're damaging their boat and uh, by the way you know it's so beautiful that Prophet Musa was like that because God is showing us that even Prophet Musa couldn't handle it couldn't understand it when he didn't know what's happening right so don't judge yourself don't undermine yourself if you find it difficult to see god's love even prophet musa initially couldn't he went to the journey oh, what happened they went later on prophet khizr explained to prophet musa the most beautiful prophet musa such a special person prophet khizr explained to him that then there was a ruler there that wanted to take people's boats away from them I created the hole here so that when he comes to take away this boat, he would say, ah, this boat is damaged. I'm not going to take it. And he would go later on. These people can fix the boat and use it. If it wasn't damaged, the ruler would take it away. They would be left with nothing. But now it's damaged. Ruler went away. They'll fix it, use it later on. So see, it was out of love. And Prophet Musa was like, oh, now when you put it that way, it makes sense. You know, <laughs> why didn't you say that in the first place? Prophet Khaz is like, sometimes you have to be patient. Pass. Rule number one, don't look at one chapter in life and try to judge it based on what you see. There are things happening behind the store, behind the scenes, and all of that will explain this later on. So what? There is a context to every story, right? And it's not easy. And even a prophet like Prophet Musa needed to go through training. To be able to look at life and see it the way God sees it. Because there's two points of view. You either see it from your own angle as a character in the story. Or you try to write, look at the story from the angle of the one who's writing it. He says, Baba, Alon, you can't see behind the scenes. We're writing so much love for this character. We're damaging his boat so the ruler doesn't take it from him. It's love, believe me. Pass, rule number one. When you look at something, know that behind the scenes there are things happening that you don't know. Rule number two, who is that person behind the scenes writing the context? God says, Iqara, read, read the story. And who is the author? Iqara wa Rabbukal Akira. 
read the story of your life but no it has it behind the scene and the one behind the scene writing it is your rab the one who will look after you and he's very noble he's very kind he's the one who created you out of love he's the one who loves you so much loved you before you were even born oh the story of your life is being written by that person so if there are certain things that right now don't make sense to you know that at one point it will make sense and you don't need to trust anyone you can live in a certain way and god will show you behind the scenes the story of prophet musa was literally a message to all of us that ends on you can live in such way that behind the scenes is open and you can see oh so let me summarize how can we reconcile God's law with the condition in life which are difficult? God says, baby, I'm writing a story. And it, there are so many different stories. Don't judge my story when it's not finished yet. Let the story go ahead. Don't just look at chapter one of the movie and be like, this is a shitty movie, right? Asan, look at the movies you like. Look at the superheroes that we like. Oh, imagine if we wanted to judge the superhero movies just based on the first scene. All of them would have been terrible movies. Masalan, uh, look at the story of Spider-Man. What are the first scenes? It's so sad, <laughs> you know. There's death, there's separation. Look at the story of Harry Potter. What are the first scenes like? You would feel so bad for Harry, right? Yani, if you look at the story of almost any superhero, you see that the first chapters of their life is so difficult. But you watch the movie, you go on, oh my God, now it makes sense. He was in that condition. He gained through that whatever he needed to become the hero that he became. Right? When you watch a movie till the end, you stand in praise like, oh, that was an amazing movie and all of that. Hope. You trusted the author, you trusted the director. You didn't left the cinema just after the first scene. You're like, let me see what is he doing. You say, ah, oh, so Harry started from, for example, that basement over there, but look where he got. Or Masalan, I don't know, look at Spider-Man. He went through this, look where he got. In every movie, you allow the director to show you. And you see, aha. Uh -huh. Literally, God in the Quran is doing the same thing. He's saying, baby, Masalan, Yusuf story, don't leave the cinema when Yusuf is on the well. Hope oh, Alan, if you leave at that point, like what a terrible story. There is a child, his brothers hate him. They threw him into the well. I don't want to watch this. God says, wait, wait, good things are happening. He's going to the well because that is the way to get him to Egypt. Right? So God says, know that this bit is not everything. This is just the first chapter. In this part, that soul is gaining something so that in the later scenes, they can become the hero of their story. Right? So, I hope that explains it. And the beauty of it is that for every single one of us, a superhero story is written. And we're all heroes in different ways. And every situation we go through is for our soul to gain something because later on we need that. That was such a long answer. Do you get slowly, slowly? I think I'm losing my energy. Should we call it a night? I'm, for the first time, I feel like I'm the one who's getting tired myself. Um, I know there were more questions. Uh, yeah, I think I answered a lot of the questions. So, inshallah, we can maybe another week talk about it. And uh, the all this is great in the moment that you're having a tough moment, all this goes out of your mind and heart. Oh, well, let me say something about that as well. Um, one of our beautiful friends says that I get all of this. And I love it. God's loving. God's message. And my story is beautiful. All of this is nice and flowery, floral. But as soon as a difficult moment happens, my soul forgets all of that. What do I do? Oh. There is nothing wrong with that. That is literally the definition of growth. Oh. The growth for human soul is like this. It accepts all of that. It accepts that God is loving, it accepts beauty, it accepts all of this, 
مثلا in, 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 in where it's at this level then it goes to another level the challenge becomes harder it cannot contain it let me مثلا give you an example خب when it's dealing with let me start with this مثلا when the difficulties in life are this much your chest says خب I can accept it there's difficulty but my soul is gaining something out of it it's full of love it easily handles it but then the difficulties become more then your heart is like no I can't I can't take it I can't take it when a soul cannot take pain hope when a pain is too much or a difficulty is too much or a fear is too much and your soul is trying to deal with it your heart is trying to deal with it it slowly slowly feel like its structures are breaking down right it's like you're carrying I don't know if you've gone to the gym and you're trying to do a, a, a weight which is too much for you by the end of it you realize the game you can't do it you're using everything inside to bring this up you use you know you change your body oh, I can't ah! what does that show too much pressure on the system the system is breaking down right and so if you're used to a set of 15 when it gets to 17 the game you can't even st stand still you bend you use this you would shout the same happens with our heart if our heart is trying to do a weight a challenge which is a little bit bigger than it can handle it'll start breaking down how does it break down it starts forgetting what it believes in and i said a few minutes ago it believed that god is loving i was like no oh, so who said god is loving god is dad i hate life i want to go like, ah. all of this means that the weight is heavier than what the heart can handle at that moment oh huh? now what and, and there's nothing wrong with that any the reason why many of us in the challenges start forgetting about everything and we become angry at god i hate it and i hate sheikh javad i hate zahra i hate their page god is not loving all of this is nonsense the reason all of that happens is this is too difficult for the heart but what the heart needs to realize at that point is that your heart is not on its own your heart has a beautiful door there and from that door is connected to God and at every moment God's energy can come into it right so if you're going through a difficulty and it's so much even if for one second because even saying to God may be difficult sometimes and you were so angry we may not even ask for help but even for one moment send your heart to God and be like God this is so difficult just help give me some energy love you show me some love just for one moment say that to god you will see that literally your heart will expand your heart will expand and slowly slowly it becomes bigger than the challenge did we not expand your chest and remove from it that difficulty that is something that every single one of us can have as well right so if you're going through a difficulty you feel like the structure of your heart the structure of your psyche is breaking down realize that your heart is not a closed environment it's connected to god there's a beautiful door there and from that door so much strength and love can come and as soon as that comes your heart becomes bigger and it will slowly slowly start to overcome the difficulty and the difficulty becomes a strength for your soul Alam nashrah laka sadrak. Did we not expand your chest for you? So our chest, our heart is meant to be expanded in all of these challenges and then we overcome it. And each of these is a journey. Again. I'm not saying that as soon as we realize this, it's going to become difficult and easy. With some of the challenges, our heart may go through them for a few days or a few months till it slowly slowly starts to accept that strength and, and open up and it's a journey hope on that note i hope inshallah you all had a uh, i hope inshallah the discussion was fruitful um if you joined us later in the night know that we spoke tonight about god's love and fear and i think i shared things for the first time some of the things i shared was for the first time i tried to open up why god's love is so important and Inshallah, we'll put the video on YouTube, MJ Shomal YouTube, huh? um, and you can watch it there.
and I hope inshallah it was beneficial. Thank you so much everyone for being with us. Thanks to everyone who asked a question. If someone asked a question and I didn't reply, I'm so sorry. Inshallah next week we'll continue. Take good care of yourself. And remember, God loves you so much. God loves you so much. And inshallah, see you in another opportunity. Wa alaikum salam. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.